Welcome back again. We're on our connective tissues. So connective tissue is the most common tissue of the body. It functions mainly are in support, protection, and binding of materials. It provides framework for organs. It provides um, binding from one organ to another organ, and it provides tons of protection depending on the type of tissue. So there's a lot of different types of connective tissues. And we're going to talk about each of those connective tissues. But first, let's talk about some of those cells that are part of the connective tissue. So in connective tissue, we have um, fibroblasts that produce different types of connective tissue fibers. So the types of fibers that we typically look at, um, one of the most important fibers, or one of the strongest fibers, I should say, is collagen fiber. Collagen fibers produce collagen, or collag fibroblasts produce collagen fibers. Collagen fibers are very strong protein fibers that function in um, providing strength with slight bendability. So um, think of your bones, and your bones aren't um, pliable, they don't like bend. But at the same time, if someone runs into your shin or jumps on your shin, the bone doesn't just snap either because it has that slight bendability. And that's what collagen fibers do. Reticular fibers are very structural fibers that help to provide a framework for specific organs, um, mainly your lymphatic organs, like your lymph nodes, your spleen. Those are um, made, or the, the, the structure of them is made by those reticular fibers. And then we have elastic fibers. Elastic fibers are thinner fibers, and their function is to provide slight elasticity so that um, materials can bend and snap back to their original shape. We also um, have white blood cells, like macrophages, that are found throughout connective tissue. Macrophages are the protector cells of all of our body. So um, they're white blood cells. They can phagocytize materials that are not supposed to be there. And so they're found in almost every single one of our organ systems will have some macrophages. And they're also found in the connective tissues that make up the different organs, which is why we find them in all these different organ systems. Um, some of the tissue cells are very specific. So we have adipocytes. Adipocytes are fat cells, and adipocytes um, are predominantly found in adipose connective tissue, but they can be found in all of our other connective tissues as well, uh, providing a packing to those tissues, kind of um, making up the intermediate areas where there's no other cells and stuff. And then, of course, we're going to have mesenchymal connective tissue cells. Mesenchymal cells are what are the precursors to all of our connective tissues. So those are the um, stem cells that are going to become different connective tissue um, types. So the three types of connective tissues that mesenchyme can give rise to is connective tissue proper, which can be found as either loose or dense, supporting connective tissue like bone or um, cartilage, and then fluid connective tissue, like blood or lymphatic tissue. So let's look at the connective tissue propers first. Um, there are two types, like I said before, loose and dense. Loose connective tissue proper. Um, there are three different forms. We have areolar connective tissue, adipose connective tissue, and reticular connective tissue. Um, their main job, they're going to be um, they have very, very vast ground substance, which is non-living material. And then they have um, fewer cells that produce those fibers that give protection or give that framework. Here's areolar connective.
connective tissue. It has collagen fibers as well as elastic fibers. It has a great blood supply. There are macrophages. There are um, mesenchymal cells, and there are fibroblasts as well as um, adipose cells in here. The major function of areolar connective tissue is to help in binding epithelium and to nourish epithelium. The basement membrane of all of our epithelial tissues. So anywhere you find epithelial tissue, you're going to have areolar connective tissue as well. Here we have adipose connective tissue. Adipose connective tissue is highly vascular as well, but its main cell structures are the fat cells, adipose sites, that can store fat. Um, so they provide protection from cold. They also provide protection from the um, any shock or blows that come in to the body. And they can um, help to maintain energy when our energy reserves are low. Then we have reticular connective tissue. Reticular connective tissue is composed of your fibroblasts that produce reticular fibers. And so reticular fibers provide framework for some of our organs, specifically our lymphatic organs like our spleen, thymus, and lymph nodes. There's going to be a great blood supply to reticular connective tissue, and there's always going to be fat cells associated with it as well. Then we have our dense connective tissues, so this is also dense uh, connective tissue proper. Um, these are going to have a lot more collagen fibers, as well as elastic fibers, not as many reticular fibers. Um, the collagen fibers are going to determine um, the type of dense connective tissue that we have. So we have dense regular and dense irregular connective tissue. The difference between dense regular and irregular is the location and the way the fibers run. So collagen fibers are the predominant fibers, uh, protein, in the tissue. But in dense regular connective tissue, the fibers all run in one direction. So you have very good protection on one line of stress. Whereas in dense irregular connective tissue, the collagen fibers um, run in multiple directions. So you have multiple lines of stress that are being protected. We find dense regular connective tissue um, producing organs like our tendons and our ligaments. Whereas dense irregular connective tissue makes up the majority of the dermis of our skin, where we have lots of different lines of stress. And then we have elastic connective tissue. Elastic connective tissue is composed of fibroblasts that produce elastic fibers. And these elastic fibers help the tissue itself function and stretch and recoil. And so you'll find this in areas where you need to maintain shape. So large arteries, vocal cords, you have to maintain shape so that you can speak or so that blood can be pumped through our system properly. If the arteries lose shape, then blood's not going to um, be able to move as effectively if the, shape, if the arteries become too wide, then you're not going to have any pressure on the fluid moving, and that's going to cause all kinds of problems with getting nutrients to those different tissues. We have bone and cartilage as our supporting connective tissues. So cartilage is a semi-solid connective tissue that is produced by chondroblasts. Chondroblasts are the baby cartilage cells that produce um, a cartilage matrix, which is a semi-solid matrix. And then chondrocytes are the adult cartilage cells that maintain that matrix. There are three types of cartilage, hyaline cartilage, fibrocartilage, and elastic cartilage. All three are avascular, 
and because they're avascular, they need to gain their nutrients from the environment around them and from the cells and tissues surrounding them. So this first one is hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage is a glassy cartilage that um, makes up the skeletal structure of the majority of a fetal um, individual. So we all started with that cartilage skeleton and then we produced the bone from that for the majority of our skeletal system. Hyaline cartilage is very protective and it does provide structure. Fibrocartilage, on the other hand, um, is composed or contains a lot of collagen fibers and its major job is to reduce stress. So it acts as a shock absorber. Um, we find fibrocartilage in between our um, freely movable and our partially movable joints. So in between our vertebrae, intervertebral discs, we have fibrocartilage. Between our pubic bones and the pubic synthesis, we have fibrocartilage. And in between our um, tibia and femur, we have fibrocartilage. Anywhere that there's a lot of shock absorption necessary, we have that protective cartilage. And then we have elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage um, contains elastic fibers as its main fiber. Um, elastic cartilage helps in maintaining shape of structures. Um, the main area that we see elastic cartilage, we have elastic cartilage that makes up the outer region of our ear, so that trumpet shape of our ear is elastic cartilage. There's again your highline cartilage. Here you can see fibrocartilage and you see those collagen fibers a lot better running along this line. And then here is elastic cartilage. Bone then is the hardest connective tissue. It has a solid bony matrix. So the matrix is the non-living tissue along with the protein fibers. Um, and bone has a solid matrix. Bone is um, very, very protective and it gives a lot of support and structure, but it's not near as flexible as cartilages. It contains both collagen fibers and glycoproteins that hold the structure together um, for protection. And then it contains calcium. Um, salt, calcium salts or calcium and phosphate that comes together and settles into the bone, making the bone very, very hard. The cells that maintain the bone are called osteocytes. Cells that make the bony matrix are called osteoblasts, so very similar to chondroblasts and chondrocytes. This is, this is compact bone over here, and then down here you can see spongy bone. So there's two types. Contact, compact bone looks very much like when you're looking at a tree um, and you see all the different rings. These rings are known as um, lacuna. Mm, no, I'm sorry. Lacuna are the little small spots. These are these little tiny areas where the bone cells reside are called lacuna. These are called concentric lamellae that surround the, the um, middle canal here, and the bone cells reside in these tiny little like areas called lacuna. And then all of these are connected by tiny little canals that connect each of the lamellae to each other. Those canals are called canaliculi. Spongy bone doesn't have these um, beautiful osteons that you see, but they do have the bone cells and um, they produce bone tissue in forms um, called spicules, so these tiny little um, bone pieces or fragments come together and they, they 
weave together, forming what looks like a lattice work of bone. Um, we see spongy bone and the ends of all of our long bones, and it helps to decrease the weight of bone, but still allows the bone to be very, very protective and um, maintain structure. It's highly vascular, so you gain nutrients from the blood. It also has a great nerve supply. So let's look at our fluid connective tissue. Blood is our first fluid connective tissue. Um, blood is made up of red blood cells as well as multiple white blood cells. This is one white blood cell called the lymphocyte. Um, the matrix of blood is a watery matrix, so it's composed predominantly of water um, and dissolved solutes, and it's known as plasma. And so this plasma pulls blood around, allowing it to do its job. Blood functions in movement of materials, in protection, um, and nutrient movement. That's the main thing for red blood cells. It takes um, oxygen to our, our cells and brings waste products away from our cells. And then the white blood cells function in protection from potential um, invaders. Then we have lymphatic connective tissue, which I don't have a great picture of lymphatic connective tissue. The lymphatic connective tissue is another fluid connective tissue that is directly associated with our blood. Um, lymphatic vessels run with our blood vessels, and when nutrients are leave or leave the blood to the interstitial spaces so that um, gases can diffuse into our cells or nutrients can move into our cells. The material is then reabsorbed by our blood, but anything that's left over gets picked up by the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system will then clean and make sure that there's no potential dangers in our blood. I'm going to stop here so I can um, start the next video on muscle tissue, okay? I'll talk to you shortly. Bye.